Rap was born way back in 73 in New York City at a house party. DJs mixed beats for dancing crowds. Speakers thumped and the bass was loud. Grandpa likes bass. DJ's friends would make up rhymes, telling stories line by line. These rhymers were the first MCs. No one had ever heard songs like these. Then came the great grandmaster Flash, who taught us how to mix and scratch. Eighties rap came to stay and run DMC walk this way. Then straight out of California, IA, we turned in to NWA. This new sound spread far and wide. No one could stop it when people tried. Then Soul Med Hip Hop with Tribe Called Quest, Tupac faced Biggie as East Coast batted West. Uh -huh. 90s rap held a message they were rebels with the cause everyone was listening to Snoop Dogg and Nas Laurel Hill had a voice that could make you cry and Missy had the moves that were super fly now Kendrick staying humble and Kanye showed us Jesus Jay Z had the flow that will never ever leave us Rap is for the people just like from the start. It's more than music, it's a work of the heart. This is a book for Will and Nash. And Grandma has to turn off her tunes. So Will and Nash, this is called The Story of Rap. And welcome to Grandma Reads 2020. And this year, we're looking at books that help us understand ourselves and each other, the Black Lives Matter movement, who we are as different races, and how we can love each other from the heart and appreciate our history. So, rap music is one of those things that has come up just in the last few years that makes our culture richer and greater and more interesting. So I hope you like that, the story of rap, Will and Nash. And this book is called We All Belong. And this is for Amos, Lizzie, and JJ. We All Belong. If you look closely, You'll soon see no one looks the same as me. I have lovely dark curly hair. We have several in our family that have that lovely dark curly hair, don't we? And my hair is straight and long and fair. And we have other people in our family that have hair like that, don't we? Yeah. I am tall and I am small. And we both love to play football. I'm kicking the soccer ball, but they call that football in a lot of countries. I like to be loud. Sometimes I'm shy. Who is smart? You and I. Everyone is different in one way or the other. I even look different to my sister and my brother. Some might say we're a different race. We think that's completely ace. What is our race? It's the color of our skin. It means we share one kind of thing. Sharing what? Sharing looks, sharing things in history books. We're the same in some ways too. We like dancing and we like blue. We both like red, we both are kind. 
We both like reading to unwind. Yeah, that's not nice to do, isn't it? My eyes are brown and my eyes are blue. When we come together, there's nothing we can't do. It'd be boring if we all looked the same, if we ate the same food and we had the same names. My family and I eat rice and peas. That sounds nice. Can I try some, please? Sounds delicious. My family sings precious songs. My family wears nice sarongs. In our school, we all belong. Together, we all get along. I love my language and the way I speak. I love my home. I love my street. Where I live, the animals squawk. Near my home, we go for walks. Not one of us is out of place. We all belong to the human race. And no matter what the color of your skin, we are all in the human race. Gavin and Shyasia, I have a book for you and it's called, Have You Thanked an Inventor Today? And all of these inventors are black inventors from many years ago and from recently. And I think it's important when we think about race and how we feel about people with different color of skin that we realize the history, both the good and the bad, but there's a lot of good and a lot of resilience and a lot of creativity in the years gone by and we need to know about it and sometimes people don't know so that's why it's important that you read books this world is full of inventions some of them we don't even think about but if we took the time to think about them we'd realize we wouldn't want to live without them you see inventions they make our lives much easier and they also make our lives more fun so we should thank the inventors who invent great inventions for without them, we might not get anything done. Like for instance, when your mom wakes you up in the morning to let you know that it's time for school, you stretch and yawn and rub the corners of your eyes and probably wipe away the drool. That's when you happen to glance over at your clock and realize you're running a bit late, but well, you wouldn't want to know that, it, you wouldn't know that unless it were for Benjamin Banneker he invented the first clock in the United States. Thank you, Benjamin Banneker. So you put on your clothes and you rush into the bathroom and you wash your face and brush your teeth and then brush your hair. Well, you should thank Lydda Newman for part of your morning grooming as the modern day hairbrush was her awesome idea. Thank you, Lydda Newman. Did you know she invented the hairbrush? Afterwards, you're called into the kitchen for breakfast, and this morning it's cereal with fruit and wheat toast. Well, thank goodness John Standard improved the refrigerator because hot milk in your cereal is pretty gross. And there he is. Thank you, John Standard. And when you're on your way to school, whether you're a bus rider, a car rider, or you walk, if you have to thank Garrett Morgan for the traffic light, otherwise none of our streets would be safe to cross. Thank you, Garrett Morgan. Then after you've settled into your classroom, you've taken out your supplies because you're such a scholar, please remember to show love to Mr. John Love for his invention of none other than the pencil sharpener. Thank you, John Love. He invented the pencil sharpener. Now, as much as I know that you love to learn, you'll admit that sometimes lunch is your favorite time of day. Well, you can thank John Robinson for your lunchbox. But what's inside, it's your mom that you need to thank. Thank you, John Robinson. And what does mom usually pack in your lunchbox? Tasty snacks that make your belly go yum, like peanut butter made popular by George Washington Carver, or potato chips invented by George Crumb. Thank you, George Washington Carver, and thank you, George Crumb. Did you know he invented the potato chips? Fast forward, the school day is now over. It's been a long one and you're happy to be home. You check the mailbox invented by P. Downing. Thank you, P. Downing. Then chill in front of the air conditioner invented by Frederick Jones. Plus, your teacher didn't assign any homework, so you decide to play a few games on the cell phone. Well, if it wasn't for Henry Sampson's Gamma Electric Cell, believe it or not, there would be no cell phone. Thank you, Henry Sampson.
And these are just a few awesome inventions. There are countless other ones that I didn't even mention, like the doorknob invented by O. Dorsey, or a type of guitar invented by Robert Fleming. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board, and Thomas Stewart invented the mop. Lonnie Johnson invented the super soaker. And W.A. Martin, he improved the lock. Thank you. So now here's what I want you to do. I'd like for you to take a moment or two and ponder over how life would be if these inventions weren't created for me. Then as you lie in your bed this evening and you think about how your day was spent, don't forget to thank an inventor. Then dream about what you'd like to invent. And I like this book because after that part of the story, they have biographies of these different people that invented all of these things in the book. Do you notice something similar about all of these people? They're all black. That's why Black Lives Matter. Think of all the inventions that we wouldn't have if it weren't for these people. And at the end of the book, there are some games and activities you can do. This is called What I Am I? There's a bunch of riddles. And then there's some little questions that you can see if you can answer. Then there's a thing about an invention box that you can try to do. And some ideas about what you would like to invent. So maybe it'll help you become an inventor. So Gavin and Shaija, I want to see what you can come up with in inventions this year. Now, this next book is for Finn, Kovan, and Owen, and it's called Strange Fruit. And I will tell you that there is a poem called Strange Fruit that's kind of serious and sad because it talks about um, a past in our history where there were lynchings, and you can learn more about that. But this particular author takes that title and twists it around to make a very interesting sort of comic book black history book, which is really cool. So he calls it Strange Fruit, Uncelebrated Narratives from Black History, Words and Pictures by Joel Christian Gill. So I'm going to show you a little bit what it looks like inside. It's really cool how he lays out the stories. Again, it's kind of graphic novel or comic book style, but there is a table of contents here. So it tells you what stories are found in here. And I bet there are some that you've never heard before. So it's kind of an adventure to learn some of this history. I'm just gonna read you a little bit from the very back of the book so you know what it's about. Strange Fruit is a collection of stories from early African-American history that represent the oddity of success in the face of great adversity. Each of the nine illustrated chapters chronicles an exceptional African-American. From the adventures of lawman Bass Reeves to Henry Box Brown's daring escape from slavery to the tragedy on Malaga Island in Maine. These beautiful illustrated stories offer a refreshing look at remarkable African Americans. So again, it's important if we're going to value each other that we know our history and we know people in the past with black skin and the things that happened to them. So I hope you enjoy this book, Strange Fruit. This particular book is for Everett Quay and Andrew, and it's called Brave Black First, and it's also about women. Now, I know we have a lot of boys in our cousins group, but it's also important to be paying attention to what the girls can do. And so this particular book talks about 50 African-American women who changed the world. And again, I'm not going to read you the whole book because there's a lot of stuff in here. Here's a table of contents. So you could jump around and pick different people maybe that you haven't ever heard about before that you'd like to learn more about. And I like this book because it has some really good illustrations to go with each person that it talks about. But we're gonna jump to one that I think Aunt Trina would enjoy. It's about a gymnast called Simone Biles. And maybe you've seen her before. So I'm gonna read you just the beginning of her story. Here's a quote from Simone Biles. I'd rather regret the risks that didn't work out than the chances I didn't take at all. Hmm. Simone Biles stepped onto the floor mat and started running, and in seconds, this petite, powerful athlete was tumbling in the air, defying gravity. Sticking the dismount, Simone flashed a brilliant smile and waved to the adoring crowd. 
Simone is a five-time Olympic medalist gymnast whose phenomenal artistry and athleticism has won her accolades across the globe. Another reason I like this book is there's a lot of big words in here, and I hope you guys can learn some new vocabulary when you're re reading this. So hopefully you know what all those words mean that I just said. At the 2016 Summer Olympics, Simone won four gold medals with stunning performances in the team, all around vault and floor competitions, and a bronze medal for beam. With a total of 19 medals at the Olympics and World Championships, Simone is the most decorated gymnast in the United States history. So that's pretty cool. So again, learning about our past and our present and people that are doing great things is important and hopefully it challenges you to also do great things. And now I've got a book for Ethan, and I know Ethan is an avid reader, so I know that he will be able to finish this entire book. This is called, Why Are All the Black Kids Sitting Together in the Cafeteria? And I'm just going to read you the splash cover so you kind of know what it's about, and then I'll let you get into it. Walk into any racially mixed high school and you will see black, white, and Latinx students clustered in their own groups. In this self-segregation, a problem to address or a coping strategy we should support. How can we get past our reluctance to discuss racial issues? Beverly Daniel Tatum, a renowned authority on the psychology of racism, argues that straight talk about our racial identities is essential if we're serious about enabling communication across racial and ethnic divides. These topics have only become more urgent as the national conversation about race is increasingly acrimonious. This fully revised and updated edition is essential reading for anyone seeking to understand the dynamics of race in America. So again, I think it's an important read. Maybe Ethan, after you finish reading it, you can pass it around to your mom and dad and aunts and uncles and maybe some other cousins. So happy reading.